Okay, so today I had, uh, well not today, a few days ago, I had a text from a friend of mine uh, who whose daughter was doing a project on art and wanted to know some some answers to some questions about colour. So uh, I answered them and I thought, actually they're quite good answers, I might share them with all you as well. So here's my answers to the questions and the questions as well, uh, in case it helps anyone here if they're uh, doing their own artwork. Um, Similarly speaking, if you have questions about a particular subject in art and you have a few questions you want me to answer, um, yeah, I would like to do that. I think I'd like to do that and share that with you. Uh, so this is all about colour and these are my answers. Hi, so I'm going to try and answer these questions one at a time. I'm using my new iPad, which is really cool. got it for Christmas. Anyway, uh, what's my favourite colour? Um, good question. I love a lot of colours. I like combinations of colours more than one particular colour, you know, I like seeing two or three colours together working well, but if I had to be pinned down to a colour it would be like a cornflower blue, like a deep, uh, a deep cornflower blue. Um, but it depends in what context, you know, if it's, uh, I, I don't know. I, I do like Payne's Grey as well, Payne's Grey is beautiful in skies. Um, I do like uh, my ochres, the yellow ochre and um, a lot of browns as well. My friends used to make fun of me because I used to like brown. I, mean, I put a lot of brown in my paintings. I do like, you know, burnt sienna, burnt umber, uh, yellow ochre. But if I had to pick a colour, you know, for a pillowcase or a, you know, a mug, it would be a, a cornflower blue, um, kind of a slightly purple blue. Um, yeah, that's the first question. Anyway, I'll do the next one. Favorite colour scheme in my work? Well, like I said earlier, uh, I started out using. Uh, not a lot of colour. Actually, I didn't really like using a lot of colour because um, I wasn't very good at it. And at college, we were taught to paint at first with just black and white or sepia or whatever, you know, a brown. And that's that's always uh, how I started out, really, is using very dull colours. But it was more about the light and the dark. It was getting the contrast right. It was getting the mix between the, the shadows, you know, and the highlights and making things look three-dimensional. And so that's what I focused on in the beginning. Um, but I do, yeah, like I said, I do use a lot of sepias and browns, and that's that's something I go back to quite often. If I don't, if I can't see a colour, you know, if I'm if I get an image in my mind and I can't see a colour, I will go back to browns because it's kind of something quite kind of natural in it, and it also fits in with a lot of people's um, uh, colour schemes in their homes and stuff. You know, neutral colours. Um, they're more appealing to a wider market than picking a bright colour. But now I'm starting to use over the last sort of five years. A lot more colour because I realise colour cells, especially a lot of pinks and blues, um, reds. Green is always difficult to try and sell, uh, like a bright green. But if you use olive greens, that's good. So I mean, I try and now add uh, colour, more colour to my work. And also, if I kind of a warm area and a cold area in the same painting, you'll see that a lot of my recent work is like you know a blue area and a, and a more warm yellowy area. So yeah, I try and. I try and have at least two or three colour schemes going on, but um, yeah, colour's been something I've been gradually working on over the years, um, so um, I wouldn't say I have a theme particularly. I think uh, I think I answered this question a little bit in the other one, uh, colour schemes, thinking about where it's going. Um, yeah, some people will, when they commission me, they will tell me what colours they want, or they will tell me what furniture they have and stuff like that, and you know, they... they they sometimes people don't really mind what I paint. They just want something, you know, you know from God or whatever, and but they don't necessarily know what colours uh, and what what it is. But they know what colours they want. You know, so they did a recent one for a lady who had the is it willow tree, the little figures, the, the little willow tree figures, um, uh, where they uh, she had the nativity set. She had all of it on a mantelpiece, and she had it there all year. And she said, I want a painting of Bethlehem backdrop, but I want it done in all the natural colours of the willow tree figures, which is really difficult to do a night scene in Bethlehem with the sky and everything just being browns, basically browns and very muted um, olive greens and things like that. And um, it was all the colours I like, but it was really hard to do a, a night sky uh, using those colours. But that's what she wanted for her living room. So I'm often told what colours to use. Um, but when I'm painting for myself, no, I just paint, you know, whatever colour I think suits the painting. Uh, the idea, if it's a landscape, you know, it, um, I use a lot of photography, so I'm often copying pictures. So, 
No, I don't really consider where they go if I'm just painting for myself. But if someone commissions me, I often ask them, is there a colour scheme? And they normally have an answer. Do I have any colours that I never use? Um, I, I never really use gold or silver paint or anything like that. Nothing with an iridescent uh, quality to it, like a, a pearl or something like that. Um, my mum does. She likes it. She thinks it looks pretty. Um, I would use it if someone wanted me to, but uh, no, I... I suppose those are the only colours. I used to never use black. I actually have always mixed burnt umber with an ultramarine blue or a Prussian blue. I, you know, because that makes a really dark colour and actually that's better than using black. So I'd say that black I would use very sparingly because once it mixes in with the painting, it can really take away all the colour and tone from other things. And black is very definite. Your eye can detect whether it's black or whether it's a, a blue black or a brown, like a suit. You know, if you say my suit's blue but actually looks black. It's, your eye can tell that very different um, tone between black and like a really dark colour that looks black. So I would say avoid black as much as you can and just use maybe a burnt umber or uh, mixed with a blue. You get a really dark colour then. Or any, any dark brown with a dark blue, you get a very deep colour, which is not as, as stark as black. These answers are starting to get a bit boring. But comforting colours, yellow ochre, <laughs> burnt sienna. Warm browns, I think, uh, for me, I find comforting. Uh, warmth, you know, anything that shows warmth, I think, but not fire. Like, fire can be quite, uh, you know, bright yellows and bright reds, and, you know, um, those colours are not particularly comforting. I think healing is, you know, people say yellow is to do with healing. So, maybe this is where the yellow ochre comes in, because it's not as stark as yellow, but it's kind of a softer yellow. Um, so, for me, comforting colours would be like the cornflower blues that I liked and the, and the, and the yellow ochres and the burnt siennas, like the reddish browns and warm colours really, um, for me. But I think it's a personal thing. I mean, some people might find like an olive green quite healing and comforting or natural colours that you find in nature are quite healing and comforting. Um, anything that's not really natural, like a bright blue or bright red, you know, can show other emotions like excitement and energy, but they might not necessarily bring comfort. Um, blues, some really nice blues often do that as well. Um, so yeah. Unfortunately, uh, we rent, so our walls are magnolia, and they will always be magnolia. I don't, I'm not sure I, what I would paint my walls if I, if I could. Actually, it's a good question. Um, I do like olive green. Actually, I think that's quite a nice a color to have in your house. I do like that sort of natural colors. Um, the furniture is dark red because it was free, someone gave it to us. I mean, our furniture is all second hand and, and um, we haven't redesigned really our house. <laughs> we haven't designed any room. It's just the way it is because of the furniture that we've been given. You know, black furniture, brown furniture, it's, it's a bit of a mess. Um, I quite like it though. I quite like my house to be colorful and, diff and have different colors in every room and, and not really be the same. Um, yeah, I think it's quite interesting. My wife is very interesting in her colour choices and patterns and things. So for me, I would just have it all white and magnolia and just, you know, just live very simple. Um, but she has introduced a lot of colour into my life and pattern. And I appreciate that. So uh, I think because I'm married, it's kind of like a half and half, really. So I don't really have a colour scheme in my house. And I probably because probably I'm a man, I don't really care about that stuff. Maybe not. I don't know. Is that a sexist thing to say? Probably. I don't know. My mum, uh, my mum is very minimalist and always has been. But uh, yeah, patterns and colours are fine. It's, yeah, colours are unsafe to put together. That's a good question. Um, uh, like I said about the black, you know, you've got to be careful with the black when it comes to paint. Um, there's a big difference between, you know, um, I don't know what I'm going to say then, I forgot. Gosh, that's a waste of time, isn't it? Anyway, uh, unsafe colours. We've got the colour wheel, right? We've got the colour wheel. You can see opposites like which colours work well together. Anything that doesn't really go on that colour wheel and work well together, you, know, you probably want to stay away from. Um, I've often added browns to a painting that has a lot of blue... Uh, sometimes browns can really destroy a painting um, when you've already got a lot of colour on it. It's, But you can go from one colour to another. If I had a painting that was using predominantly yellow and blue as, as the contrasting colours which work well together, I would be very reluctant to put a green in there. And so when you get sunsets, you're painting a red sunset and it goes up to a blue sky, 
the reason why you add red into the sunset is to stop the green in the middle you know because if you go from a yellow sunset to a blue sky you'll get green in the middle and you want to avoid that by adding the red so that's why sunsets are always painted with a bit of red in between to stop the green so you know it, it sometimes you have colors that accidentally appear in paintings and you think oh that looks wrong you can just see it and and you, you can learn that way i think you can experiment and maybe try and throw colors together that shouldn't work but um over time you sort of realize what doesn't work and uh i, I wouldn't say there's ever a never like you should never put these colors together but there's certainly if you look at the color wheel and what what is um uh, what works well and you can see what possibly wouldn't work well if you use the color wheel in, in, and uh and change it around you might see that yeah anyway color is important uh, but not very important I'd say it's more important that you get the contrast right your light and darks your tones your mid tones uh, I often take pictures of my work halfway through and turn it into black and white on my phone and if it doesn't work if it doesn't look good in black and white then it's not working the painting's not working at all because if you paint a sky and a grass you know blue and green and you take a black and white photo of it and the two look the same, the same kind of grey, then the paint is not really working. Uh, you can't just use colour as a sort of way out and say, well, you know that's grass because it's green. Contrast and tone is far more important than colour. But colour is important if you want to be a commercial artist because people buy paintings for different reasons. And one of the main reasons is because they connect with the colour and they connect with the emotion behind it. And colour is a really quick way of conveying an emotion uh, and a feeling and an energy, or whatever you want to call it, a spirit. Um, people connect with they, you know, they might want to express themselves and say, "Look, I'm a zany person. I want a bright red painting for my wall to show people who I am." So, in that respect, color is very important. They want a painting for their bathroom because the color scheme is yellow. They need a yellow painting. So, to be a commercial artist, it's very important. But what I'd say is more important as a just a general artist is that your pictures work in black and white as well as color. If you do that, if you get that right, you'll be such a better artist, I think. Um, I've taken photos of some abstract artist's work and I've turned it into black and white and it still works. So look at people like Kandinsky and stuff like that. Um, and you might want to Google some images and turn them into black and white and have a look because you'll find most of the time they work in black and white as well. So they've got a sense of tone and uh, brightness and darkness and shadows and light. That is probably more important than colour. Colour is an, is an extra bonus. It's like, wow, you know, it's it's even yeah it, it it adds to it so it is important color is very important but um not as important as um contrast well thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed that if you thought that was quite insightful uh i did actually uh, uh reading the questions and answering them made me think about color uh so it's great for me too so thank you to hope for uh the questions and uh i hope this has helped other people too take care Bye bye